What's up y'all? It's me Tasha C. And in this particular video y'all will be reviewing, recapping Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 8, Episode 8. And shout out to my YouTube fam and I hope all y'all had a Merry Christmas. And you know, I'll make a couple videos but I hope also you get ready for Happy New Year. Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah, and just have a happy day. I hope you have a lovely weekend. Uh, it's supposed to be a winter storm up here um, in the Northeast area. Whatever, starting tomorrow at 2 something and it's supposed to be last 3 a.m. Sorry, throw that random thought in there. But like I said, shout out to my YouTube fam. You know, for my YouTube and you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe and like and share the video if you have to. Thank you. So anyway, I'm going, you know, I'm not going to go through everything this episode because they didn't give me everything this episode, so it wasn't even needed. So we just going to go through some things instead of not everything. Um, but next week looks very interesting. But yeah. Now, to make a long story short, we're of course to go towards the end of Don Juan, Kyle Franny, and Frey, Faye, and Porsche, and shit, I keep getting that lady's name wrong, we're gonna call her Miss S, or Mrs. Leopard. But anyways, let's get to the filler part. Um, like I said, everything was going now. Candy and Demetria from last season, who, if y'all know, I don't know why, if y'all been watching BET, I don't know how I got stuck actually watching it with my guy system, but somehow they had like a marathon of nothing but House of Pain. So I've been seeing Demetria quite a bit in the last couple goddamn days. And so when I'm seeing her, I'm seeing House of Pain because uh, somehow it was just stuck on a marathon with all these damn episodes. I don't know why we didn't change. I was just stuck on watching House no offense, I'm, I'm just saying, when I see the major, I'm like, God damn it. So anyway, she on the she regular level. Um, Rob, Bob, her man, you know, Candy and her, and then Don wanted to go to meet. Um, Candy is second producer on her on album, and they also do it on the song. And Don Juan just making sure to get ready for, I guess, the video and the premiere. And he's protective about making sure, like, okay, Candy, we're just going to keep it up. Her ass so as fuck, got nerves, have a baby. That's really, I'm just interpreting really what she wants to say. But I'm trying to protect because knowing that she has these health issues and she also is old as fuck is really what he wants to say. You know, like she knew Moses when, you know, before, uh, uh, when he was and when he was 10. I mean, just the way he was talking about it to a certain extent. But he's also concerned about her well-being and making sure she's okay while she's doing the suit, whatever. Now I want, you know, sometimes he sounds like a drunken ass gnat and stuff sometimes when he keeps talking and shit and just getting in business. But apparently, the hen is still be about the cool. He obviously knows how to manage enough to keep that bread going in for all of Candy's. I don't know how your general manager about Candy Coded Nights or whatever he's over there, but we have to admit, like, he's doing something right besides sometimes getting on some people's nerves. But... He's protective, so, you know, they're just making sure everything is right. Then even fast forward when we go later in the episode that he's making sure that, uh, Candy's position right, the floor ain't slippery, she ain't about to bust her ass, you know, she, or nothing like that, which is understandable, you know, um, especially with her being with child, cause, but even Candy had to let him know, and them know, like, oh, what well, y'all trying to, cause I'm old, uh, 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 older, you know, and, you know, I can do this, I can do this. And she referred to J-Lo and I think Holly Berry, which is true, they were older than her when they had children. But Candy is like this. If I can do, she can do everything, which is proven that. I don't know, y'all, I know she, I don't think she had a baby yet, but I know she's about, I think, around, around this time, she's about to give birth. And her friend Tiny, um, I don't know how, how long she is in her pregnancy, but, you know, they didn't too long get pregnant around not too far from each other. Heck, they could have had a double baby shower. She saved some money. Anyway, <laughs> but... Anyway, um, other than that, we go fast forward, because like I said, the parts of um, the suit. We got Kenya Moore looking luxurious. Um, she's first with her auntie and her cousin Shay, and she's trying to go on some dating sites, something like that, right? And later on, we see Marlo making an appearance. Oh, I don't work out, but, oh, uh, gosh, this is just too much. Let me show pretty, looking how bad my body is. You know, just spilled her, but you have to give credit like Marlo is uh, you know like i said very uh, um like i said ch chisel i mean it ain't she ain't sitting here with 10 damn abs or whatever the hell you want to call it but i mean it's like she has personal trainer and you know you got kenya and both marlo looking uh very pretty at the gym and marlo feels like um okay whatever about the gym but here's kenya's thing about you got your filet mignon you got mcdonald's beef um you even have uh burger king beef you have a bunch of choices of beef you know, at the um, at the gym, 
which is interesting that she's sitting here saying, like, basically, Ma will fall for the bait, but then she's got this this dude that, you know, because, you know, Kenya has a, li a list, and you know what? I, I know there's a store and office stuff, but since Kenya is looking for somebody, whatever, or trying to get credit for the year 2016, whatever, I'm surprised she hasn't found a way to try to get a spinoff on her own so she can find a date or find one, you know, you amp it up a bit, say, will you be, uh... My baby, no, we, that would be appropriate, said baby's daddy. But I'm saying it would be interesting to find a dude so she can, like, speed up the process. Or, you know, do one where, you know, the potential, uh, the potential one, the potential one. I, I just thought about this, you know, maybe she can get a spinoff of finding somebody. Or at least the perfect candidate to be, you know, the father of her kid. You know, whether he's, you know, skiing the cup or whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. But... Anyways, she see this one dude. Marlo's like, you know, the guy is handsome or whatever. This guy just flirted to. But can you miss that he's a little bit younger? I don't know how much younger that she he um he is, but apparently he you know she didn't want to say. All right, but they flirt. They've been flirting a couple times, and now all of a sudden she's you know figure you know where Marlo kind of gets like y'all need to date. Kenya goes on a date. He doesn't fit everything to her listings. But at the same time, there's up in the air about the second date, whatever, right? Speaking of dates, Peter comes back and they go some fire trip or something. Either he's something like that, because I think I w went down the room and stuff, uh, 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 you know, whatever, around that time. But, you know, first he sends Cynthia some flowers and stuff, you know, and trying to make up a network on their marriage, right? Then we see another scene where, like I said, they go on a date. They got etch a sketch or, you know, some artists and stuff and they just seem like they're working on working at a good place in their marriage again okay who knew that kicking somebody's stomach and cooch can bring such unity but anyway so um we got um that scene over with because like i said it really wasn't that too much that episode we have phaedra um, now, if we remember Bun last season, when Paula right before going in, he spassed out, whatever, coming at, um, um, a phaser with a screwdriver and all this other crazy shit, right? That's the guy who was there when I think he was supposed to turn himself in or something, and she called him, and Bun, you know, got Apollo away from there or whatever, right? And apparently him and Bun had obviously had served time together one time. I don't know that's when they met or whatever, right? And he was basically saying, like, you know, it was a shame that the marriage, you know, how the action, you know, his actions, you know, affected, the you know, basically his actions messing up everything. But he said he used to talk about how he wanted to get with Phaedra and all this stuff, whatever, right? Now, did, 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 did y'all notice that actually she has nerves to say, yeah, we were teenagers. Did y'all hear that? Or was I hearing it wrong or just sleepy as hell? That I heard her say, oh, when we were teenagers, wait a minute, homegirl, you were about probably in your, wait, 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 wait. Maybe he was in his teens, but she was grown as hell and at least, what, 25? Wait, wait, how old is she? How many years older is she as Apollo? But don't sit here and say you're teens, you're not. The last teen that's technically in, you know, the dictionary and probably legal terms, 19, okay? Once you even hit 20, that is totally different. Adolescence actually ends after the age of 19. You know that, right? So for her to say that she wants to call herself a teenager or make it seem like her and Apollo was like almost like some high school sweethearts and they met each other, you know, during the high school stage, you know, not, you know, at the same high school, but you know, like the high school stage, they met in the late teens, mid teens, whatever. But no, it wasn't like that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Don't be sitting here giving people a false story line. We got on over, uh, uh, we, we've seen it before that you admitted that, you know, you were look, you are in your 20s and stuff or mid, I don't know how many, like, how many years older she is, Apollo. But, that was, mm -mm. and then Bun's coming over, like I said, you know, he brings some airbrush, you know, stuff for the kids and just kept going on her. But you know, it's also Phaedra says, you know, like, he comes over, one of the only friends that comes over to check on her and the kids. And I'm going to do a separate video about speaking of people considered to be fake friends. But when you're in a situation like that and somebody goes to jail, and personally knowing people that are close to my life that, you know, not a bunch of people, but knowing people in jail, or even just hearing about it, whatever, like, yeah, and even just, and the point is, it is not obligated for people to sit here and do all the stuff once you get a consensus, you get caught up. You know what I'm saying? Or some people take the fall call, whatever, woo woo woo. What I'm saying is, is that this. Apollo put himself in that situation, okay? Even though she won't pretend like she don't know about it, allegedly, whatever, right? I have to go into this for this reason. 
So she's saying that's the only friend that's supposedly positive that's supposed to ch that post this checking on her. That's also indirectly, you know, I take it. It's like I was saying simply hugging Peter, ate shit, and whoever else, whatever, ate Schmidt because they didn't check on her and the children. And then, like I said, it's not obligated for, like, most people, they may write letters at the most. And maybe you might be lucky to get visits. Or people put shit on your darn books, whatever. So, I mean, you know, not good. But, I'm just like, um, Phaedra, just just worry about. But we do notice that the businesses are not showing as much. The focus is on her children and about what her husband did and how the marriage ended and you know this and he's done this and he has woo woo with all this here. But she was the main one last season as we seen even when Candy said like you the one sitting here like you about to go to Party City and take out aisle one, two, three and get all but the celebration decorations and have a fucking party that hissing that nigga in jail. That's pretty much what the fuck it seemed like then she want to sit here and change this damn violin story. Now, she was going to school. She had jobs. So, what happened to the jobs this damn season, right? It's, you know, all we see every damn season, she's up there making cooking with the babies, which is nothing wrong with that. But it just seemed like ever since Apollo has been starting his sentence, and as far as the filming, it's been changing. You know what I'm saying? I, we see the change. Most of us see the change, whatever. But it has changed over where we don't even see oh, the jobs. We don't even see her pretend at the damn desk or something. You know, she's an entertainment lawyer. She's pretend, you know, um, she sells, um, 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 you know, uh, hot pressing cones. Whatever the fuck. I'm just saying we don't see it. What do we see about her as far as her, uh, as her thing? Even if Kenya's just selling nothing but water with hair, uh, and some hairspray bottles and shit, at least she's trying to tip to sell some shit. <sighs> I'm just saying. And Kim Fields, what is she, you know, she directs films and stuff, whatever. We've seen a little bit of that, I guess, in directing. But I'm just saying this, what is Phaedra doing now? So she takes Aiden, you know, and also she was talking to Bun, I forgot to mention. And he was asking about how the kids, and, you know, I guess, especially with Aiden. And Aiden already knows what's going on. But people be under, under, uh, underestimating children. Uh, you know, a lot of children, a lot of times you think you don't know what these kids are talking about. And you be sitting here thinking you're talking to Cole whatever and uh for example um not too long ago we were trying to say something and then my nephew who is now six about to be seven in a couple months decided oh okay you were talking about such 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 such, such. we you know like we not only could he spell this this little negro i mean this was a couple years ago also too this this he already knew how to read okay uh just sitting there just smiling like <laughs> oh but the kids be, they be under MS, but kids, a lot of kids be catching on to what you be doing. So he already knows that his dad, he do be emailing his dad. So obviously wherever Apollo's at, they got internet access. And, you know, just you know, how Phaedra's just dealing with it. Okay, next. Um, so, we basically go to the video shoot and Fei Fei and Poor Po go to the video shoot. And they're up here supporting her. And Candy, you know, like I said, you know, Don Wall's making sure she ain't, the, the whole set is okay for her to perform. And I think, was Todd there? I don't know if he was there, but he really wasn't there or didn't want to be at these events, whatever. Like, you know, we don't know how Todd is, you know, whatever. He chills sometimes, and sometimes he's into certain things that she's in, and then he's not. <sighs> but Phaedra Porsche just seemed to be all focus on her, but you would think it was Candy's video because they didn't really even show Demetri too much in that damn scene. It was all about Candy. You thought it was a damn new album. No, it was a guest feature. Okay, we thought. But they spoke to them because, like, um, like I said, we see also in the later scene that Candy and Todd are talking. And Todd is asking basically, you know, how are they doing again when those cops, you know, again, it's, I think it's got me to check. I think it's for a premiere primer. You know, she know he know he ain't gonna get a check probably at the thing and he's like I don't like ugly I ain't gonna uh you know basically confront her or act ugly at this event but you know they've been going about this stuff for two whole years about I guess him not getting his full payment for this unfinished supposed project whatever but unfortunately knowing um how Phaedra is and this is not the first time that we heard allegedly you know even dealing with her now also rewind Remember when the time I worked Demetria first, you know, how Candy was hesitating working with Demetria because, you know, working in the same circle of friends groups 
Um, and then they show flashbacks about her and Kim. Flashbacks of her and Phaedra. It wasn't somebody else like they didn't really get into it, and I'm not trying to bring Miss Norris up in it, but wasn't Miss Norris, you know, that's hit that she had with him, Miss Norris, whatever, Miss Norris was going, and that was actually a decent ass hit, and then all of a sudden it just went downhill, and Miss Miss Norris came on and said, like, you know, um, Candy didn't, you know, pay with something about the money, but it never been brought up again pretty too much, so I don't know what went on with that, you know, okay, but, um, you know, she just was kind of hesitant. So, but she was like, they paid, uh, Demetria gave her the check. So she's fine with that. Good enough for us. Good enough for her. So, um, we're about to hit the photo shoot. But before then, y'all, speaking of everybody looking for love. Oh, here we got a Portia sitting there talking to Mr. Oliver on Skype or whatever, right? He probably was thinking it was going to be a live webcam and shit, whatever. You know, it goes down in DM, and hopefully he will see more of that. So they basically talking and still flirting, and then she even said something about, oh, I was like, you're just in Miami, and all this talk, whatever, woo, woo, woo. And then she was talking about how she lost pounds, and he seen pounds, and she, I, well, I say pounds, but I meant to say pounds. And you got to do was like, I hope you didn't lose anything in your butt. I mean, she's like, well, you know, the first time I did met you, I practiced music fun, and it had to do a flashback of the, the, yeah, of the bikini, you know, that, you know, was like I said, was about to get eaten up by her ass, pretty much. Bikini, you know, the yeah, bottom, whatever. So, he's talking, whatever, and woo, woo, woo. And then let's fast forward. But once you get to the part about what, you know, does he want to be in a relationship, did you notice how all of a sudden, you know, the special effect curse where he paused. And then, uh, you know, like, it seemed static and he couldn't answer or something. It seemed like somehow he was pressing buttons or something just didn't go right once that occurred. So, I'm like, uh, okay, um, Portia, I mean, this is, I'm just saying, consider how it first happened the first night and whatever, even though she was furthest, whatever. I think his attention is, you know, she's like, uh, he even admits. Oh, no, no, so she's like, I meant to say, he even admits that actually he was attracted to her butt. And she's like, what about, it wasn't just my smile. And it's like, um, probably after he probably looked up, you know, maybe one time. But it's just that he's probably looking at, because I think he admitted that he has dated black women, but he has not had a girlfriend. And I think he's trying to add Portia to that list to date or indirectly means hopefully I can uh, bone you, screw you, let you, uh, smash you later. So that's pretty much what that is. He's trying to get another, you know, uh, 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 sexual uh, caramel in his bed bedroom or near his hotel possibly. It's the way this is going. Okay, Portia, do not fall for it because, um, you know, if you expecting more, he just wants less and less of your clothing, which you literally didn't almost have any with that bikini bottom, but he wants to see that and help you can squat on his stick later on in a future session so elder than that um um so <laughs> um she said she's gonna skype him up like i said eventually he's gonna ask to see um, more of the skype that inquires that she doesn't have any clothes i'm just saying so then we get to the party excuse me y'all so then we get to the party y'all and um basically we have this, like I said, I think Cynthia comes, Peter comes, Kenya comes. I'm surprised Marla come. We didn't see Sheree this episode. I know this neither. I don't think, or if she was, I blinked that she didn't make any presents. And, uh, like I said, Kenya was able to hug Peter, and they cool now, whatever, and they talked about the, um, the Moore mansion. And, like I said, Sh Sh that girl who's, um, Miss, I'm gonna call Miss Leopard Prince, um, and Portia and Phaedra ends up coming and Kenya and Ty come to the event. And Demetria, like I said, they have her there and then they don't have her there, whatever. And they showed a video, you know, even when they're showing the clips of the video, the focus was really on Candy. I think they showed Demetria less than one second, but it seemed to be more focused on Candy and how to be able to camouflage her stomach and you know this seemed like but it was like don't tell me shit about my man or something i don't know what it was but somehow your man and don't tell me shit about him or some one of them type of songs right and that was it 
But I think Portia or Pedro, one of, one of the PP crew, um, decided to, like, say, like, you know, the focus seemed to be more candy. You thought it was candy. So, and that's what they seemed to focus on based on the, uh, the filming was all candy. So, anyways, y'all. Like I said, I'm not going to go do everything in this episode because, like I said, it was a filler. But, did y'all notice? Look, I says all of a sudden, Phaedra decided to talk to Can, you know, go over there and talk to her Candy about the video. Because, like I said, Candy and Todd had another talk again. You know, they on good, we're on better terms ever since Miami, right? But, here we got Phaedra. She decides to talk to Todd, whatever, and let's know, you know what? Come and step into my office and we'll talk, whatever. And it's like, okay, uh, for what? And, um, what time? And when you, be, you know, it's just like the way she was calling, like, okay, uh, we're going to talk about this stuff and well, but, but, but later. I, I don't know how they talked before, like she just said, come to my office and make arrangements. But, mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I thought they were more cool than that. Even though I know they're at a certain point in time, just saying he wants my money, we can be cool. Bitch, better have my money. I, I don't act like she, he's forgot. And, um, apparently somewhat she has, so at least a certain amount of $8,000. And based on the next episode, he said it's showing her to cancel checks or whatever. And, um, yeah. So, even Todd and Candy was talking, Todd was kind of asking, like, he felt kind of awkward, which was kind of weird to be brought up like that, where, I, you know, maybe she could have just called him, all, not at the par party, you know, called him besides the party, and they could have made arrangements to say something there, you know. But... Yeah, but here's the interesting part, y'all. Miss Leper Parent and Phaedra and Portia decide to talk outside of the same place. I think Phaedra, by the way, did say hi to meet you for a certain, certain point before they gave the video, right? But we all know how it went down last season. So, I guess they ain't gonna pretend. But anyways, y'all. They're talking about this, and when she's talking about, well, you know, I decided to have an office of y'all. This is what Phaedra saying to Portia and Miss Leprepin, you know, because um, he did, or did this work and the production didn't come out, but he want to talk about this, about this thing. So I'm going to just go ahead and talk to his office. But they're saying this right in front of the event where people can go in and out the door and hear this shit. So while they're sitting here talking about this, we want to talk about this as one darn thing, but you're also talking about it right inside of, outside of a vent, is if you want people to hear, and hear the shit about, you know, what the mess between you and Todd, or whatever, supposedly, the beef that y'all have, or the demise of y'all friendship, or acquaintance, you know, I'm probably saying one word, but them being a good acquaintance, uh, folks, and, uh, <sighs> But Don Watts sit there, he texts and prop fakes time and you know on blab or whatever the fuck he doing. And then all of a sudden he sees and he like, er You know, doing like the eye look and shit probably at their asses because he like the hell they said just sitting there just talking about them and the matters. You got of course Portia up there like, yeah, this is you know, they should this, that, and you did this and the fit product or something like that, and you know, she thinking she knows what she's talking about, and then Here's Portia also saying like, Do so that's why y'all friendship fell out probably because of the Todd situation here. That's when Phaedra started like talking a little bit. And then Don Juan made his interest, you know, hello ladies, how are y'all doing? And because, you know, I've just been hearing y'all talking about the fam and all this other stuff, you know, so I had to come in and slide in what I hear. And, yeah, you know, of course they're like, hi, how you doing, blah, blah, blah. And... But they're kind of like, what are you talking about? You know, type of thing. Like, they weren't, you know, sitting there damn near with an uh, invisible bullhorn just talking about shit about the situation with him and Todd. Now, unless they were sit up there talking about a bring to the event, I mean, Ty and Candy they themselves, what was really the purpose besides just bringing the unnecessary mess to this? It was uncalled for. It was not needed. It didn't even need to be known. You know what I'm saying? It could have been hidden and locked until further notice. And then on top of that, if a Portia had on the, on her game, you know, it really had her head on the game is, if Phaedra is sitting there talking about business like that outlines, I'm just saying Portia decides to do any endeavors and stuff like that um, with Phaedra. If y'all don't get on good terms or some fuckery, she's going to be in the public bay too and with a camera to talk about y'all shit as well. I understand you they talking about camera that's not technically a person, but she's sitting here talking about stuff that has to do with business and blah blah blah, woo, 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 whatever it is. If you want to be professional with your jobs, make sure you keep it that way. 
You know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't needed. But I mean, yeah, to a certain point, it wasn't needed. Don Juan to like confront him. But it's also to let it be known, like, we can hear you. God damn it. And if she do owe the money, you pay, you know, pay the man. And, you know, we, we just go in there. And then Tom should have made sure if he was supposed to get a certain amount of Pacific money, and he, you know, make sure he gets paid the Pacific amount and such, 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 and such, okay? Because it looked like he's still out $8,000, okay? So she's, like I said, even reminded that she paid $30,000. But then Miss Lepreet did also make sure before John Watt came over there and confront them that she's like, uh, uh, well, how do you know that he got paid? Did you notice that too? Oh, I, 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 you know, I wrote the checks. And then we still, she still could have been like, well, okay, just because you wrote the checks don't mean they didn't bounce. You know, <laughs> I'm just saying. It could have been bounced on that court like we've been playing basketball and shit during the playoffs. So I'm just saying, boom, boom, boom. You know, just saying. So... Don Juan, like I said, comes over there looking like he just came off the new version of 2015 Miami Vice with his outfit on and shit. And then all of a sudden, he just let him know, I heard what you're saying when we talking about fam, and I heard what you said, and that's why you bring this outside of the, this event and talking this, you know, business part matter and stuff, you know, and all this other stuff, you know. And then basically make a little short shirt, all of a sudden, you know, Porsche got to go night-night. Rage gotta go night night and Miss Left Print gotta go night night and just leave and walk on. You're like, you know, whatever, why, whatever. And of course, Portia is in the confessionals talking about how thirsty he is, like he need water like Niagara Falls, whatever, right? And then she said, no, go to sleep and get some water, something like that. And then, because he was focused more on Portia for some reason, because he didn't really say, like, Major, uh, you know, facial, whatever, night, night, and hopefully, you know, your security account is still um, secured and everybody else that you deal with, as far as your clients, you know, what I'm just saying. But, you know, um, but he came at Portia when she was on, on her way out, you know, like, doing the start of leaving. He was like, go ahead and, you know, get back that man you lost or something like that. I'm like, god damn, well, down one, like, ooh, 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 god damn, you know, I ain't about to steal your last, um, uh, 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 last crackers out the cheese box because shit, because <laughs> shit, the way he went, that was like, damn, which one was referred to, her husband or this last little boy toy somewhat that she had that you know whatever i don't know what they was talking about but goddamn that's kind of how much it, it, that i think pretty much how it ended i'm sorry y'all it was a boring ass episode me like i said i can't work with no, uh, i can't give you everything if it's nothing there or barely looks to nothing there you know what i'm saying oh limited not a limited just limited stuff to give you and by the way we did see kim fields by the way oh i've got to say was it Stephanie, oh my YouTube cousin step up on here, who's my YouTube who watches her. Was it Stephanie O'Neill, Stephanie Neal, Stephanie, or was it Helena who was one of them who told me that? Remind me, it was Alexis that was Kim's sister that I think should have been over here, and it did show at the beginning of the episode where her cut him. I was like, gosh darn it, Stephanie, I'm gonna walk in later. Stephanie, not to get them mixed up, but. They usually are the two main ones to give me information like that. So shout out to both of y'all. <laughs> y'all been kicking with me for a minute. But Stephanie and both Elena both have kind of gave me information. So that's why I honestly don't know which one had said it. Because they both be like, you know, like a human, like, dictionary, the source of information, <laughs> including entertainment. But, you know, shout out to my YouTube cubs. <laughs> but so... Um, yeah, but it was her beginning. She cut her hair off and they seemed like they didn't talk for a while. And Kim came to the event, the video event. And then y'all know it's also in the corner we're talking about the event. Um, her, we uh, uh, before I leave off. We got Peter also in the corner. Kim Spill's husband just sitting there silenced in the background or in the table. And Todd, he was talking about, you know, like, wh what was she? So she hasn't paid your money, blah, blah, blah. And that's what I was talking about, the two-year thing, the confessionals. And he's just like, you know what, whatever... As far as that, he just basically want to move on. Want him to have his money. But, you know, what was Peter even bringing that up for about talking about the event? Like, they can sit there and talk at one of his... Was he supposed to have a coffee place in here, too? Or did that go down here? Was he supposed to have Peter's Peter's Grande Coffee? Peter's Coffee's house? Peter's Caramel Coffee's house? Peter's Grand's Coffee? What, what happened to that? I'm just saying, so... I, you know, they were talking about that a little bit too. But other than that, y'all, like I said, it was not that much this episode. I am sorry if I didn't remember anything. But yeah, y'all have a pleasant white, pleasant week, pleasant weekend. And I definitely see y'all in the next video. Alright, y'all take care.